Well, in our Old Testament reading today from Jeremiah, as I shared earlier in the children's message, God is making a new covenant with His people. He is promising to remember to forget. Kind of an interesting thought, but that's what He says. Now, as I shared with the kids, a covenant is a formal agreement, a binding alliance made between two parties. And it's usually set in some sort of way that it's hard to forget that it happened. The, the, Greek, the Hebrew word is actually related to cutting, so you'd be polishing something, you're creating something by paring it away, right? That's the, the verb used for establishing a covenant, a binding agreement. And in our reading in Jeremiah today, the people of God are experiencing the consequences of breaking their covenant with God. Now, if you're familiar with the book of Jeremiah, much of it is not as hopeful as these three verses. Much of it is prophesying the end of the kingdom of Jerusalem, that the Babylonians are going to come in and God's people are going to be taken into exile and their temple destroyed. And that's because they broke their covenant with God. That's what the whole Old Testament really is about, God reaching out to His people, restoring them, redeeming them giving them His law, and then they are faithful for a short while, and then they go after other gods, and they spurn their God, and they don't keep their covenant. But it's a timely oracle of Jeremiah here in chapter 31, because he's pointing them to the future hope of a new covenant, a new covenant even better than the old, one that sustains His people in the midst of suffering the consequences of breaking the old covenant of the law that God made with His people through Moses. Now, this new covenant is different than the one that came before. It is unconditional. It was not conditioned on you keeping the statutes of God, but instead, He is doing all of the work. And not only is it unconditional, but the scope of the work that God is going to do is complete. It leaves nothing unfinished. Notice if you look at this reading again in verses 31 to 34, all of the action words you find here, every single action word described by Jeremiah is God's. I will make in verses 31 and 33. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God. I will forgive their iniquity. I will remember their sins no more. No, you must do this, you must do that. Only God describing what He is going to do for His people. So out with the old and in with the new, I would say. And we're in the process of doing that in the season of Lent. We've had a couple of, of Sunday sermons where we've meditated on the fact that the way of Jesus doesn't make any sense to the world, and here we are again, God promising a covenant without condition to do all the work for a people who've just broken His previous covenant, and yet He will make. He will put His law within them. He will write it on their hearts. He will be their God. He will forgive their iniquity, and He will remember their sins no more. Today we're going to look at two key differences highlighting between these old covenant and the new that I think are really important, especially as we near Holy Week. The first difference is the placement of the law. Notice the law doesn't disappear, but in the prior covenant, God's people through Moses, God gave His people the law, and He made a conditional covenant with them that they must observe His law, keep His law, observe His statutes. If you've ever tried to read the Bible from beginning to end, your Bible reading plan probably went kaput in the middle of the long explanations for all of the rules and observations of the worship of God in the book of Leviticus, for example. In this case, the law wasn't written on their hearts, but something they must learn and keep and teach to one another. And hence here in Jeremiah, the distinction is highlighted in verse 34 when he says, And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, 
know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the greatest of them, or from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. So instead, God is going to make His law known by writing it on their hearts. He's going to do that. But the second difference is that God isn't going to be known through His law. How is God going to make Himself known from the least of them to the greatest? He says in the very next sentence, because He is going to forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. You see, in this new covenant, God is not revealing Himself through the giving of the law, but instead through the gospel, the new covenant of knowing God in Jesus. Now, this makes sense because if we really think about it, that's how we came to know Him ourselves. Or it makes sense if you've ever considered, have you talked to somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus and you start with the law about all the things they're supposed to do? doesn't really work, does it? because they don't believe. So how is it they come to believe? The gospel. I had a reminder, a wise reminder for pastors to keep in mind is it can be very tempting to preach the law and make people feel bad. But the law doesn't change hearts. Only the gospel does that. And that's what's being described here by Jeremiah. The future hope of God's people our current hope, that God is making Himself known to us through the gospel. So it turns out in this new covenant, the way for the law to be written on our hearts is through the gospel of Jesus, through the forgiveness of our iniquity and the fact that God remembers our sins no more. So that's why I chose to summarize this new covenant with the curious and thought-provoking phrase, that God is formally promising to remember to forget. That's the only way it was ever going to work out between us and God as fallen sinners, is that He did the work, and part of that work was promising to forget, to forget our sins and remember them no more. And as we near the end of the season of Lent, I I chose this text because I think it's good for us to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Throughout Lent, rightly so, we're called to look inside ourselves, to reflect on our own sinfulness. But that can lead us to be too narrowly focused inwardly and forget the big picture of what's happening, the journey that we're on, its destination, and its end point. We can lose sight of one of the key features of this journey in Lent, which is the establishing of this new covenant with God, the forgiveness and freedom from our sins. We're remembering our sins in Lent so that we can remember that God remembers to forget. Did you follow that? Not so that they may bind us and bring us deeper into despair, but so that we may know and believe that we have been set free from them once and for all. In this new promise, this new agreement between God and us, sealed with the blood of Jesus. Now, I want you to ask yourself, how often have you come to church and confessed during our confession and absolution, sins of which you've clung to after? sins which you dwelled on and felt trapped by, despite the fact that you had received God's forgiveness. Jeremiah's words remind us today that we should let those go. God has. What reason do you have to cling to them any longer? That's the promise He has made with you. If that is something you're dealing with right now, these words of promise and comfort are for you. You know God. He's made Himself known to you through Jesus, and in doing so, He has forgiven your iniquity, and He remembers your sin no more. This new unconditional covenant of knowing God through the gospel is what we celebrate today 
and what we celebrate when we remember the events of Holy Week beginning a week from now. We remember the events of Holy Week and we observe the season of Lent all so that we can remember that God promised to forget our sins. We remember and celebrate Holy Week despite its heavy and bloody scenery because it was by this very blood, the blood of the blameless Lamb of God, that this new covenant was sealed. We remember and celebrate Holy Week because just as Jeremiah says here, we know that all the work and all the sacrifice for this covenant is done by God, given to His people as a promised gift. So today I want you to remember this new covenant that God has established with you. Remember and rejoice. Take a deep breath. Set the worries and anxieties of life aside. For your Lord and God has promised that your iniquity is forgiven, and He remembers your sin no more. Dear friends in Christ, that is where we're headed. That is the destination of Lent, a new victorious covenant sealed with the precious blood of Jesus, victorious evermore. In the name of Jesus, amen.